It's a Sunday kind of beauty. I'm Maya Tan. It's our monthly episode on a Sunday kind of love where we talk about all things to do with beauty. Miller Harris is a British perfume label founded by Lynn Harris, who is trained in the classic French art of perfume making. She brings a unique spin to creating fragrances, keeping in mind urban sensibilities and British wit, or a penchant for poetry. Take any of their products and be seduced not only through your sense of smell, which goes through a journey of different smells with every perfume, to finally settle on the character of the fragrance, which again is different depending on the way it resides on your skin, but also through the romance of ideas and visual imagery. One of my absolute favorites is a fragrance called Cassis en Foy, which is described as la divagation des vignes et l'abondance des fruits dans un jardin oublié. The rambling vines and bountiful fruit of a forgotten garden. That makes me sweat. Heath Kelleher, international brand director at Miller Harris, tells me how it all comes about. When you speak to Lynn, she is an artist. Some artists put paint on a canvas, Lynn puts it into a bottle. And when she began the brand, she wanted to have a brand that was focused around naturals, that had an identity in the market, that had a very defined signature. Picasso and Monet had very different signatures. And as a perfumer, the Miller Harris signature is a bright citrus top note and a very green, earthy, woody base. And you see that signature flowing through. Lynn. Uh, doesn't necessarily do any sort of music or art or any of, any of those sorts of things, but her artistry came through in how she created Miller Harris and how she puts the juice in the bottle with a very defined perfume signature. So Lynn is classically French trained. She applies a very modern British twist on what's otherwise very French in the industry. Her belief for perfuming is using natural ingredients. So Lynn takes, uh, say for example, fig. Often when you have a fig perfume, it is slightly sweet, it's slightly fruity. Lynn's taken a bitter sea salt side of the fig. Um, when we take the grapefruit, rather than taking the sweet side of the grapefruit, we've taken the very stringent, very citrus side of the grapefruit. So Lynn is classically French trained and you see that French influence coming through in what she does. But the way she puts the ingredients together to create her perfume has always a bit of quirkiness, a very modern sort of nature. Would that be your unique philosophy then in terms of creating perfumes using natural ingredients and also using the unexpected components of a particular scent? Very much so. I would say for Miller Harris, um, our philosophy is using very high naturals, uh, a lot, a lot of naturals, but also the highest quality. Some of the ingredients we use are 15 or 20 times the price of gold, um, monumentally expensive. Some of the plants can take 40 or 50 years to grow and then take another five or six years to be able to extract the oils that you use in perfume. So the process takes a lot of time. Uh, but the quality of the ingredient that you get by going through that process is unparalleled and it can't be made with man-made ingredients. Some artists would put paint on a canvas, Lynn puts juice inside a bottle. Everything within our range captures somewhere in her life, a place, a moment, a time, a memory, maybe it's a specific uh, family member. Lynn puts ingredients together to capture that emotion. What are your labs like? I'm curious now. I imagine her in a tiny little cottage somewhere in the south of France or, or in England somewhere. In England, actually. <laughs> it's, in, uh, it's in Notting Hill. A very affluent area, but it's, the area is also full of a lot of natural trees, a lot of flowers. Um, it's a very green part of London. So I think for a perfumer, it's very inspiring to be in that part of the world, surrounded by so much nature. Um, you've got Regent's Park and the various uh, Hyde Park, the various beautiful parks around, inspiring a perfumer to to put nature back into a bottle for us as consumers to wear. How many fragrances do you have at the moment? We currently have 19 perfumes in our core range. We have a premium collection called Perfumes Library, which is four signature perfumes. And we have something tailored to a little bit more of the Middle Eastern client, a range called La Fume Collection, or in French, The Smoke. We've brought out six new perfumes this year, um, a range in March called Jardin d'Enfance, um, all based around the childhood garden, if your French is not as familiar. 
Uh, we've just uh, just about to launch a brand new range called Editions, celebrating unexpected moments in your day with spontaneous fragrances. Mm. There are some great uh, new editions coming at Christmas time with some larger size candles, some travel sprays, uh, and next year we have some very exciting launches, some that I'm already wearing and people are stopping me in the street for. What I also find interesting is that you have this approach with fragrances where you look at it as a wardrobe and you don't just wear one, but you could layer and wear several together. That's very true. I give the analogy that if you wear the same clothes every day, you get bored with them. Mm. So why as a consumer would you wear the same fragrance? I think for the 80s and 90s, the industry taught us to have a signature perfume that people would know you by. These days, I think, particularly within the niche industry, within the upper market of fragrance, it's more about finding a fragrance fit for your mood. Um, how are you dressed today? Are you dressed in a grey business suit with a white shirt? Something very crisp, very professional. Maybe you want a fragrance that's a little bit more citrus, a little bit more green. Um, perhaps you have retired uh, from work uh, for the afternoon and you're going to the opera in the evening. Perhaps you want something a little bit more stately, a little bit more grand, a little bit more elegant. Um, for the ladies, perhaps it's moving from something fresh into something more powdery, for instance. You can have very similar perfumes, but they can take different approaches, I suppose. And that's where your signature becomes powdery, but you have a day powder and you have a night powder. It's also customizable, then. It's something that each individual can create for themselves. Because um, fragrances on different individuals also give off a different scent. That's very true. Right? I think it's the uh, chemical reaction of uh, the fragrance on one's skin. That's very true. And it's more so with natural ingredients. We were talking before the difference between natural and synthetics. Synthetics being man-made uh, uh, chemical creations. Synthetics are relatively true to the bottle, to the skin. However, the natural ingredients, which are essentially essential oils or absolutes, if you're familiar with those terms, the essential oils hit your skin. And we all have our own body oil composition that's based on fatigue, it's based on stress, what you've eaten, your hormones, all of these things affect your own body oil. And when the naturals hit them, your body oil starts to react with the naturals. And the beautiful thing is you don't want to smell like the same person walking down the street. With Miller Harris and the high volume of naturals that we use, Maya, you and I could wear the same fragrance, but it's going to change in just slightly different directions, which means it's maybe not as identifiable in the street, which to a degree is, becomes your own perfume. So tell me about your bestsellers. One of our perennial favourites is La Feuille, or The Leaves, mm -hmm. uh, if your French is not, is not that great. It's from Perfumer's Library. And this perfume takes you through a promenade through the season of autumn. If you think at the beginning of autumn, the leaves are green on the trees, but by the end of autumn, the three months later, the leaves have wistfully turned yellow to brown and then have wistfully fallen to the ground. The rains hit, they become a little bit damp. The perfume La Foy takes you on that journey from the greenness and the freshness at the start of autumn as you've come out of summer through to the coolness and the dampness that ensues as you lead into winter and that the way it takes you through the whole season is quite beautiful. The fragrances are so complex and there is a story behind them. The story helps the customer start to understand the complex journey that's going through their nose. Is there also a particular story when it comes to what ingredients, what sort of fragrances she selects? for each perfume? Um, the story comes from her training actually. When Lynn was training in grass, she learned thousands of different ingredients blind. She would have to know exactly which one they were to her nose. A very technical understanding, ingredient after ingredient after ingredient, and years this took. The beautiful thing is that now, as a perfumer, when she started Miller Harris, she knew exactly which ingredients to create that feeling. So La Foy is a very unusual mix of bergamot, rose, galbanum, but cedar wood. So you get greenness, you get rose, you get woods, but the way it comes together is the journey in the nose. As a consumer, we don't have enough knowledge to break it down to go, oh yes, I can smell amber and rose and the various things. What we get is an olfactive journey that takes you into a place in your mind. And I think for a consumer, sure, we could give you a list of ingredients, but if you don't know what those ingredients smell like in their real life, it's more about the whole creation and how it takes you. And that's the ability of Lynn as a perfumer, knowing exactly which ingredients to put in to, to take you on that journey. What about the Le Fumé range? You know, what sort of heritage or history does it have? And why smoke? Sure, it's a great question. In 2011, we launched La Fumé Classic. 
Lynn had been on a trip to the Middle East and she walked through the souk and she was inspired by the market stall owners with such energy calling for attention. Come into my stall, come into my stall. The use of colour, but everywhere, the bakur, the uh, incense burner, and the way the incense dances in the air. As it comes out, it has this wistful kind of nature. And in, in the late 2000s, we saw the industry moving into ouds. Every, every perfume house was getting on the oud bandwagon. Miller Harris always puts a modern British twist on what's otherwise in what otherwise exists. So Lynn was inspired by the way the incense twirls out of the incense burner. So her fragrance, rather than being a traditional heavy oud, she's created an oud that dances and twirls and has a lightness to it. So that's where the idea of la fumée or the smoke came in, because Lynn was specifically trying to capture the way the smoke dances in the air. And when you smell the fragrance, they all dance. So it started in 2011, um, and then each year since, we've launched a new fragrance. Each one is based around the idea of the smoke, La Fumée Arabi goes into a very much more concentrated spice, very much a statement perfume. La Fumée Ottoman finishes with a beautiful Turkish rose. You've got the spice in there and the smoke, but it finishes with the softness and the powderiness of a Turkish rose. La Fumée Maroc moves into soft peaches, prunes, apricots, dried fruits. And then La Fumée Intense, the best way I can describe it is to take the characteristics of the rose, the fruit, the smoke, the spice, and really up the concentration. We're just about to launch a, a sixth called La Fumée Alexandrie, which finishes with a different type of rose, and it gets an even more spicy sort of style of rose. And that's the beauty of the La Fumée collection, is male or female. If you like something a little bit more heavy, we can get the heaviness and the spice, but we can also finish it off with the softness of the fruits for the ladies, or the powderiness of the rose for the men. The brand has been uh, in Malaysia for nearly a month now. Um, so it is very early days. If you haven't visited the counter yet, I do really encourage you uh, to come into Isatan KLCC. Uh, the staff will be very excited to be able to walk you through our extensive collection.